Hello, it's good having you join us on African Free Press Television this evening for stories in the news this week. My name is Leo Oketa. Speaker of the Kogi State House of Assembly, Momo Jimo Lawal, has been impeached. Jimo Lawal, who was impeached yesterday alongside his deputy Aliyu Aku and minority leader Hassan Bello, has been replaced by Honorable Godwin Osi, representing Oguri Magongo. Osi was elected as the new speaker, while Honorable James Eneche from Olamaboro is the new minority leader. It was learned that he was removed by the 17 out of 25 members of the Kogi State House of Assembly. And a federal high court in Abuja has deferred till Monday the bail application filed by the founding chairman of DA Communications, Chief Raymond Dapesi. Justice Kebre Kolaole, who had the bail application, said that he could not give ruling immediately because the processes filed by the parties and the suits were presented before him on Thursday. Justice Kolaole said that he needed to study and assimilate the processes before reaching a decision on the bail application. He subsequently ordered that Mr. Dopesi be remanded in the custody of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission till December 14th. In his argument, counsel to the DAC Communications boss, Mike Ozohome, argued that the offences for which his client was standing trial were bailable offences. He noted that Mr. Dopesi should be granted bail of on self-recognizance or in the most liberal terms. The counsel to the EFCC rejected the application for bail on the grounds that he had allegedly uncovered uh, the receipt of over 8.7 billion naira from the federal government for the hosting rights of the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in 2012 by Mr. Dopesi. And in a fresh case, obviously, the federal government is now investigating Raymond Dopesi for his alleged involvement in another fraud involving over 8 billion naira. The government's lawyer, Rotimi Jacobs, a senior advocate, yesterday told a federal high court in Abuja uh, Jacobs said the federal government was about rounding off invest investigations into a fresh allegations of 8.4 billion naira of uh, the AIT Ray Power Emeritus Chairman collected from the Good Luck Jonathan Administration for airing the FIFA Under-17 Championship, which Nigeria hosted in January 27, 2012. He said though the airing rights was granted his company, Dark Communications, by FIFA and without the federal government as a party to the contract, Nobesi allegedly collected 8 billion naira from the government for the execution of the contract. Jacobs was arguing that the government's counter affidavit against Dobesi's bail application. And Nigeria's former Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Dr. Ngozi Okonji Wala, has dismissed allegations that she illegally authorized the diversion of recently recovered Abacha loot during the administration of former President Goodluck Jonathan. Dr. Okonji Wala described the allegation as part of a campaign of falsehood to tarnish her image. In a statement on Wednesday by her media advisor Paul Wabiuku, the former minister noted that the contents of a memo dated January 20, 2015, in which she responded to a request by the former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambodasuki for funds to prosecute the war against Boko Haram was distorted. To set the record straight, the statement maintained that the central responsibility of the Minister of Finance is to find sources of funding for financing of approved national priorities such as security, job creation, and infrastructure. And meanwhile, Senator Uche Punife has claimed that she will beat Chief Victor May again in the rerun election for Anambra Central a Senatorial District. On Monday, the appeal courts nullified Uche Epunife's election and ordered a rerun in 90 days. Reacting to the judgment, Epunife said the same people that voted for her before would vote her again to win. But she said she was not disturbed by the noise being made in government quarters concerning the outcome of the appeal court's judgment, adding that she was very optimistic that whenever uh, the election is conducted again, she will beat Victor Ome. And following the conclusion of the supplementary governorship election in Kogi State and his persistent refusal to accept the position of a deputy governor-elect, James Faleke on Tuesday showed up in the House of Representatives where he took part in the day's plenary. Faleke, who had persistently insisted on being declared governor-elect of Kogi State following the death of Prince Abubakar Aoudou, currently chairs the chairman on customs, chairman committee on customs and excise in the 8th House of Representatives. The presence of the two-time lawmaker in the House having transferred his voter card from Lagos to Kogi to enable him to exercise his franchise 
has also raised new legal questions as to whether or not he still has the legal right to represent Lagos State. And meanwhile, Justice Adeni Ademola of the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has adjourned the trial of former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambo Dasuki retired to January 28, 2016. He adjourned the case after consultations with both defense and plaintiff lawyers. The federal government filed a fresh application seeking to stop Dasuki from traveling abroad for medical treatment. In its fresh application last Thursday, Mr. Olushe Yopasanya, counsel to the government, asked Justice Ademola to stay proceedings in the ruling he delivered on November 3rd. Dasuki was indicted by a presidential panel probing the procurement of arms in the armed forces from 2007 to 2015. He was accused of using his office to award fictitious arms contracts. He denied the allegation, stating that former President Goodluck Jonathan approved all the contracts he awarded. And now on the foreign scene, Rwandans will vote in a referendum on December 18th to whether uh, to amend the constitution and allow President Paul Kagame to remain in office until as late as 2032, officials said on Tuesday. Under the proposed amendment, Kagame in power since 20, 2000 will be able to run for office again after his second mandate ends in 2017, first for a seven-year term and then for two for the stints of five years each, stretching to 2032. Kagame is the latest veteran ruler in Africa to attempt to extend his hold on power. Similar moves have already sparked violence and instability in Burundi, Burkina Faso and Congo uh, Republic. So far, there has been no political unrest in Rwanda. And still on the foreign scene, the call by the U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump to ban Muslims from entering the country has led to officials asking Republicans to reject him immediately. White House spokesperson John Ennis said Trump's campaign had a dustbin of history quality to eat and said his comments were offensive and toxic. Ennis also said other Republican presidential candidates who have pledged to support the person who eventually wins their party's nomination should disown Trump immediately. And now in sports, the French Football Federation on Thursday indefinitely suspended star striker Karim Benzema because of criminal charges of involvement in a sex-state blackmail attempt against teammate Matthew Valbuena. Federation President Noel Lagre said that the suspension would include a 2016 European Championship to be held in France unless the case was settled. And these are the stories we're tracking for you in the news this week from African Free Press Television. For more, please do log on to our website at www.africanfreepress.com. Follow us on Twitter at African Free Press. Like our Facebook page at African Free Press. Join us in our discussions on various interesting topics on African Free Press Forum. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at African Free Press. My name is Leo Oketa. Do have a blessed weekend.